Greetings, goblins, and welcome to Elder Goblin Games, the universalist TTRPG channel where the DCs are made up and the stats don't matter. Speaking of not mattering, today we're asking the question, is bigger always better? This is the largest player's handbook the game has ever had. This is the largest monster manual the game has ever had. First and foremost, uh, the Dungeon Master's Guide is bigger. Like all of the revised 5th edition books, we have added pages to the book. Bigger. Largest bigger. 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 Added pages to the book. Today we're here to talk about adventure design. Specifically, comparing and contrasting two types of adventure design. The adventure module versus the adventure book. And before all the 5e players get mad at me, Pathfinder was even worse about this back in the day. I think Rise of the Rune Lords totals at about 600 pages for a single adventure. Ike. So, how much exactly is too much? Well, that all depends on who you ask. Ask five different people and you'll get six different answers. Everyone is just a little bit different in regards to what they need in order to run a game smoothly. And that's what I want to dig into today. You see, when I first started this hobby, I was playing a lot of Pathfinder 1st Edition and D&D 5th Edition. I would see these two to 400 page tomes and think, oh, this is what you do. This is normal. So when it finally came my turn to GM, I just thought, yeah, I'll just download this academic sized tome into my brain. That's how you run an adventure, obviously. Why else would they make them so long? And maybe I'm just slightly divergent in the way that my brain thinky goes, but this did not work for me. In fact, the entire process was so daunting that I almost gave up on the idea of becoming a game master entirely. Eventually, I tossed the adventure out with the bathwater and started from scratch, basically writing a mediocre version of The Hobbit. And guess what? My players never noticed. You changed just the right detail, and it feels like a completely different story. It was a void dragon, not a red dragon. And not dwarves, they were Duragar. Hola, future Jordan here to say, while I was editing this video, I realized it had a much snarkier tone than I originally intended. So I just wanted to say, do what works for you and your group. These games are all about having a good time, and that's ultimately what's important. So back to past Jordan. Disclaimer, this is the point of the video where the subject is just my own opinions, what I found works for me. This may not work for you and it's totally fine. If you are someone who loves those giant textbooks of room after room descriptions, each with its own paragraph of box text, this video may not be for you. So I just want to push back a little bit against the growing norm that these giant adventure books are the default way to go. I think as glossy 300 page books have become more in vogue, the idea of these little thin adventure modules has been pushed aside. That and the profit margins are probably a lot better on those. So what I've discovered works for myself is this simple mantra. Less is more. That's right, Michael. Move over. As counterintuitive as that may sound at first, less info gives me more room to be creative adapt to my player's choices, and escape the rigid shackles of the text. There's just a certain style that adventurers are written nowadays that make me feel very beholden to the sacred text that's written in the book. Especially when that text is trying to intricately interweave 5,000 years of history before the adventure even begins. I mean, really, I'm not sure why this became the norm. I don't feel like internalizing the Silmarillion every time that my players want to clear out goblins from a dingy cave. These days, I'm always on the lookout for an adventure that gives me just enough info to go off of without trying to beat things over my head, like I don't know what a stock standard cave looks like or how to set an average difficulty challenge for a lock. I also find it much easier to skim read smaller adventures to find those key points I'm looking for without having to sift through fluff or needless detail that the players will never see. Here's a pro tip for you. If it doesn't happen at the table, might as well not have even been written down or read. Okay, so let's dig into an example. Here's an excerpt from Waterdeep Dragon Heist. This is one room, and according to the map, it's not even a big room. Do I really need this much text to run a single room in a dungeon? Like, right here it tells you someone killed someone's pet rat and then took the MacGuffin, but then it tells you that the players get none of that information in the next sentence. So, why is this info here? I did a word count on just this one room. It's 645 words. Let that sink in. That's 645 words to tell me it's a crypt, 
there's a clue to the MacGuffin, and then the party gets ambushed. That's it. No questions asked. It's always going to be an ambush. But before you get up in arms, I'm not dissing 5e at all. I think it's a great game, and I ran my own homebrew adventure in it for years. I am, however, dissing most of their adventure design. I happen to think it's simply far more words and work than it's worth. I was really excited about this adventure, mostly because I thought it was basically going to be what Blades in the Dark turned out to be. Okay, so up next, let's compare that to a little adventure I picked up for Shadow Dark, written by the game's creator, Kelsey Dion. This adventure design, which also includes three new classes, new spells, and a hex map for the area, is only a whopping 65 pages, and in my opinion includes everything you need to run a small chapter of adventures. I went ahead and counted. It's about 30 pages of adventure and 35 of bonus content. That's 30 pages versus about 255 on average in adventure books. So just to compare the dungeon portion of this adventure, let's look at the ruins of Bittermold Keep. Here's the overview, about a paragraph, plus all the info on the factions within. Then here's the rumors or hooks to get the party started. Then the set dressing for the entire dungeon. Then we have our concise bullet-pointed rooms. And here's the map at the end. And just to focus on the area surrounding the dungeon for a minute, here's where the rest of the adventure takes place on this beautiful hex map with all the points of interest highlighted. Oh yeah, and move out of the way, Silmarillion. Look at that history. It's about a paragraph. Then we have descriptions of those POIs. Again, about a paragraph or two each. Let's just read one to see how it feels. 102 Shattered Tower a crumbling keep in a clearing choked with thorns and nettles. A heavy trap door in the ruins leads down to an old cistern where a dark shape slithers beneath the putrid algae. What is the dark shape slithering in the cistern? Anything you're excited about. Just throw it at the party. Or maybe this is a perfect place to connect a different quest line. Add a detail that excites you, the game master, the most. And see, that's all the info you need to be inspired about that little broken tower. Also, while I'm here, I'd like to point out another thing that's great about an adventure written in this style. They can work with literally any system that you're running. You might even say they're... Universal! And while I'm here, this is kind of a personal gripe, but an adventure doesn't need to give you the stats of every creature you come across crammed into the text of that room. Why not just say there are four goblins in this room and trust that they know how to run goblins? I guarantee you whatever RPG you're playing has a monster book with goblin stats in it. I don't care if it's MCDM, D&D, DCC, WFRP, or whatever acronym of choice you play. I think that adventures of this size, or ones like the 20 to 30 page Dungeon Crawl classic adventures, are perfect to get the gears turning in your head or spark a mini arc or adventure campaign. Then you can spin off several of them together, or come up with your own adventure based on what your players think is going to happen. Now, I can already hear someone typing, but that's a lot of work. But personally, in my experience, you end up doing a lot more work trying to decipher what the bigger adventures actually want you to do. Or end up just looking through paragraph after paragraph for where the story is supposed to lead, or how to find those important clues in 300 plus pages of text. Look, if I wanted to read a novel, there are plenty of Brandon Sanderson titles I haven't made it around to yet. And that's if the important clues even make sense to you at all. Because a few of them I've run did not. Okay then, Jorben, shut up and get down to brass tacks. In my not-so-humble opinion, what do I think you actually need to run an adventure? Well, I believe you need a good hook. I believe you need brief descriptions of points of interest and rooms if it's a dungeon crawl. The main conflict for wherever the adventure takes place, ideas for obstacles that stand in the way of the party getting what they want, and a brief list of NPCs or factions important to this adventure. But most important of all, make sure to include whatever details excite you as the game master. That could be anything from puzzles to specific monsters, or maybe really hard no-win scenario choices, or even set pieces for the big villain fight that concludes the adventure. At the end of the day, the adventure should be there to inspire you and take care of the less important or less interesting details, but also leave you enough room to add the details that you are excited about. Like, I just had a weird idea for a boiling lich skull trapped inside of an oversized gelatinous cube. 
and it just keeps expanding and expanding, taking over a cavernous region beneath the earth. I don't know if that's anything, but it's fun to think about. So remember, don't work to make an adventure playable. Instead, let the adventure work for you and only prep the parts that you are excited about running. Oftentimes, people forget that's a major step in avoiding GM burnout. So in short, less is more, concrete floors, average DCs, and wooden doors. Well, that's it, folks. Remember to like, sub, hit the bell, hit all, do all that jazz, leave a comment, talk about your favorite adventure. So remember, make mistakes, choose door number three, and let the Wookiee win. Back to basics, let's get down to brass tacks and start rolling the dice. We need some practical facts, no more theory crafting or lofty abstracts. I need a concrete solution, a foregone conclusion. Back to basics, we're back to basics. We're back to basics We're back to basics